Alright, what is going on guys? BP Hero checking back in here. And today we are working with, as you saw in the title, the DeMarini Not A Lie series from 2021, which DeMarini calls 2022. And up first here we have the mid-loaded model, thanks to my guy John Hall. Uh, we're hitting a general mix of balls for both bats in this video because both of them have about 60 to 75 swings on them with 52s. So we're just hitting our general mix of balls, 52 300s, evil BP 52 plus, a handful of BP rockets, and some evil classic M's and Dudley Thunder ZN Pro M softballs. The field we're on here is like 320 down the lines and 350 in center, I want to say. Good old baseball field action for you. Both of these bats are the new U Triple SA 240 standard, but they are also certified for NSA and ISA play as well. This mid loaded not a lie is stickered as a 27, and I did feel that it did swing true to weight. And although it is advertised as a mid load, I will say that this swung exactly like a balanced bat to me. If you know me very well at all, you know I am not a fan of mid loads at all, and I did not feel this thing was even the slightest bit of a mid load. 100% felt like a balanced version of the in loaded not a lie. It was very smooth to swing, it was very easy to get around, and very easy to control as well. The 13 inch barrel on this not a lie did feel like it might have been a little more broken in than the inloaded model that we're getting ready to swing here in just a minute, and the tester did tell us that. This one started at like 299, and by the time we were done here, it was down into the 265 ish range. We did get more swings on the min loaded model than we did the end loaded, so that would probably be half the reason that it dropped in compression the way it did. And although the barrel itself overall did have somewhat of a stiff feel to it, the whole thing was usable. It wasn't stiff in terms of bad performance or anything like that. Just the whole barrel itself is going to have a little bit of a stiffer feel to it, which is something that has become pretty familiar with most of the 240 bats that we've swung so far this year. Performance was really good, just an overall stiff feel to it, which could also be attributed to the alloy handle that this and the end loaded model also featured. With kind of the nitty gritty of this one out of the way, let's head over to the labs and see what's going on over there for this one. All right, so we're just gonna make a quick trip through the labs here today, nothing too in depth. On a scale here, this 27 came in at 26.8 with the original grip on it. And when we got this thing with like 60 to 75 swings out with 52s, it was testing at 299. And after about the 75 to 80 ish we put on it with pretty much anything we felt like throwing at it, 52s, 44s, all that stuff that I mentioned. It did come in at 265. And I will say for being at 265, this thing hit extremely well. I was expecting something in the low 250s and to see that this thing was still in the 260s and having plenty of room to come down did impress me. Like I said, it's going to be a quick trip to the labs today. So let's head back to the field and I'll get into my final thoughts with this thing. All right, so listen, like I mentioned, I do not like mid-loaded bats. But I am a little confused on why Dean Marini decided to call this bat a mid-load. Had somebody just handed this to me and said, hey, what's this feel like? I would have 100% set a balance bat. It came through the zone like a balance bat. It swung like a balance bat. Everything about it said balance bat to me. And I do have a soft spot for a good feeling balance bat. And that's what this felt like to me. I was able to get in a pretty good groove with this thing. Once I kind of figured out what I needed to be doing, I kind of had it in my mind that I was going to have to fight the mid load. So it took me a little bit to get settled in from that. And once I did and realized how I needed to swing it, it was lights out. Dean Marini has really impressed me in two things so far this year with their 240 bats. And one of them is the performance of the 240s, even with the way they're testing. They're still testing a little bit on the higher end of things in the 270s and 280s and still hitting very well. We saw that with the young guns and we also saw it here. So durability with the 240s, Dean Marini seems to have on point and that is a huge plus. So believe it or not, BP Hero hitting this one with the stamp of approval. You heard it here first, a mid-loaded bat got the stamp. All right, so checking in here with the in-loaded model. Big thanks goes out to my guy Jacob Junker for sending this to us so we could check it out. In case you missed in the uh, beginning intro of the mid-loaded bat, we're basically just hitting a mix of balls, 52 300s, Evil BP 52 Plus, some BP Rockets, as well as some Evil Classic M's and Dudley Thunder ZN Pro M softballs. And again, this bat is approved for U-Triple-SA play with the new 240 stamp. And it's also approved for NSA and ISA. This one had like 50 to 75-ish on it, just like the mid-loaded model did, all with 52s. And this thing was still pretty high on the compression testing side of things when we got started here. But we will get into that here in just a few minutes. 
This one is stickered as a 26.5, and although it did feel like it was going to swing a little bit heavy, it actually came to the zone really, really fast, and was a little bit of an adjustment to get used to, and although it came to the zone really fast, I do feel like this could have used a little bit more inload to give it a little bit more drive, maybe. I don't know, just overall, it swung like a really light bat, and we did have a little bit of trouble trying to drive through a ball a little bit at times with it, and I do firmly believe it was nothing more than just the bat weight itself. It hit some balls well, but by no means did it blow us away in performance. This is advertised as having like a half ounce of inload, and but somehow not hitting and driving the ball like it should have, in my opinion. And just like the mid-loaded model, this one does have a 13-inch barrel on it. And again, just the same as the mid-loaded model with the barrel feel and feedback, it was stiff, but the whole thing seemed to be usable. As long as you're hitting balls on the screws and you're consistently around the sweet spot, the bat's going to treat you well, just like the mid-loaded model. With kind of the specs and stuff out of the way, let's head over to the labs, and then we'll come back to the field. All right, quick trip to the labs here again. This 26.5 came in at 26.7 on the scale. And when we got this thing, it was testing at 311 with the 50 to 75 on it with the 52s. Not a ton of swings, just enough to kind of get it loosened up. And then when we finished up, we actually put about 30 or 40 on it on this day and then another 30 or 40 more after this just to kind of help get it broken in for a tournament that was coming up. And it was still testing at like 293. So again, De Marini definitely has the durability side of the 240 bats figured out. Like I said, we're just going to be quick with the lab stuff today since it's kind of a longer video. So let's head back to the field and I'll tell you what I thought of this thing. For whatever reason, uh, this bat just didn't really blow us away. And I firmly believe it had everything to do with the weighting of the bat itself. Well, one thing we have noticed so far with the 240 bats is the heavier and more inloaded they are, the better they seem to hit. And that was definitely the case with this one that um, quote-unquote mid-loaded, not a lie that you just saw, you were able to whip and, and get a little bit going with it just because it was a little more whippy, uh, having a little bit of a more of a balanced feel to it. You could whip the bat a little harder. But th with this, the inload didn't really drive for you, and it was just enough to really drag you down to where you, you, you couldn't really whip to drive with the bat. It was just kind of a weird feel. And I do think that it had everything to do with just the weight of the bat because the Young Guns, which is basically the same exact makeup of this bat, was phenomenal and it was an ounce heavier and has a little bit more inload to it that is why i'm sticking to the theory that a little bit heavier and a little bit more inload really does a 240 some good unless you're going with something that's going to be super balanced that you can really whip and snap through the ball with i'm no scientist and i'm definitely no expert but that is kind of my conclusion and brian's as well on why the mid-loaded model seemed to be and feel so much better than this one obviously we're still a ways apart in compression testing and I'm not saying that this thing couldn't get better as it breaks in. It's going to be a very subjective thing to who likes what as far as weighting goes. But this is just my personal opinion and preference. So I won't say that I hated this thing, but I'm not going to give it the stamp of approval either. Uh, I'm just going to give it a try it before you buy it rating. If you're looking to get something like this, I would highly recommend just trying to grab a Young Guns. There is still a handful available at HeadbangerSports.com. But if you do have to have one of these, I can get one of these for you as well completely up to you that's just my thoughts on this bat thanks again for the boys for sending these out so i could try them out and make this video for you guys i hope you enjoyed it thanks for stopping in sweetheart in case you hit it bp hero we'll catch you next time Wait, Rudy.